Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa and today I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of how to get the Stardom controller connected to Kepware OPC server via Modbus Ethernet as well as the Yokogawa YView HMI panel. So I'm going to kind of take you through some of the steps necessary in order to make all this happen. The first step that you must have is of course to have a Stardom controller that actually has the Modbus communication portfolio license on it. In order to uh, check what licenses you may have installed, you can go to Resource Configurator, connect up to your Stardom, and then go to the License tab, and you should see Modbus communication portfolio license. If you don't have this here, then if you have an FCN or an FCJ, all licenses reside on the system card. So you can either uh, purchase or uh, if you've already purchased, you might need to download the actual license and then install it on your system card. With the FCN RTUs, it either comes on the CPU or it doesn't. So you had to have purchased a model that actually has the license on it. So uh, models like SA0, SA1, or S10, S11, uh, these are all types of models that uh, contain the Modbus communication portfolio. But if you happen to have an RTU and this is not showing up, then the version you have purchased does not have the Modbus communication portfolio license. And it's uh, not something we can kind of uh, install after the fact. So on the RTU, it's either there or it's not. So once you verify that you have the Modbus communication portfolio, you're going to need to, uh, of course, uh, go into Logic Designer and uh, do a little programming. But uh, before you can really do the programming, you had to have also made sure that you've actually got a copy of the uh, Modbus uh, portfolios, the libraries. So these little items over here. Okay, these come on the uh, media, the NT205 media, which is the application portfolio DVD. On the application portfolio DVD, there's a uh, Modbus application portfolio. You have to make sure that that's uh, been installed. So once you have that installed, you can go ahead and uh, either open up a uh, sample project 11 that's uh, on the application portfolio DVD, and that'll have a, a bunch of example code like you're seeing here, like the uh, Modbus client and the Modbus server. Or you can uh, go ahead and do a new project from scratch, but you're going to want to make sure that you add in uh, some libraries. And uh, one of the critical libraries to add in is the uh, SD uh, Modbus uh, EPF that you're seeing here. Because uh, the one that you're definitely going to need is you're going to need this block. Okay, and that's uh, the SD CMD BSE BS Open one. Okay, and so right there. So you can basically drag and drop that over there. You're going to need to kind of fill in some of the items here. And then for these guys here, you're going to have to go ahead and uh, make sure that you attach some arrays. So here's a coil array. Uh, here's a uh, integer array. Here's holding register array. And these are uh, these guys here, if I just double click on it, they're type word. This guy here is a type word as well. That guy there is kind of a bit or a binary. And so is this guy. So the data types are already created. You essentially just have to put in some names here. And then what these are is these are arrays of that data type. And these will be what gets served up. And then to actually populate those arrays, I've used a couple of uh, blocks here right here that can take a real variable and put it into two words and then I, the variable type I put them into is kind of the H reg, the holding register here and I put it into the first part of the array the second part of the array and then down here I'm kind of doing the reverse I'm taking holding registers and I'm converting them into a real so the demo read variable, this would be a variable that maybe I wanted to read on my HMI, so say a process variable. And then down here, this is a variable maybe like a set point, something that I want to take from my HMI 
and right into the stardom unit. So this is kind of taking it out of the stardom and this is kind of pushing it into the stardom. Now for stuff like uh, set points or any other variables where maybe they exist in two places like the HMI, where the HMI could set it, or maybe you've got some type of special code inside of stardom that's setting it automatically, like set point tracking or something like that, you're gonna to have to kind of write your own code that determines when I'm gonna use the one from the HMI or when I'm gonna use the one from internal. Uh, really all this video here is showing you is just how to get your basics communications up and going and then what you do with the variables is really up to you. So I'm showing you how to essentially read in a variable into an HMI and I'm showing you how to write from an HMI into a variable inside the stardom. So here's the uh, three basic blocks that I would uh, use to do something like that. So once I have these, I can go ahead and do a, a make on it, and then I can go ahead and uh, download it to the unit, which I've already done, and then I can kind of switch into debug mode once it's up and running. Okay, and we can kind of see, here's my demo read variable, here's my demo write variable. And so these are ones I'm gonna read and write to from my YView HMI, as well as the Kepler OPC server. So let's uh, walk up, the things are pretty much done on the uh, stardom side here. Let's go over to the Kepware OPC server to see what that looks like in terms of configuration. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've done a, I just kind of did a uh, right click there and I went new channel. And when I pick new channel, I uh, selected uh, Modbus uh, Ethernet here and I just named it RTU. I enabled diagnostics just so if anything kind of goes wrong, then I can uh, see what's going on. And I just kind of used my default network adapter, but it also allows you to pick a specific network adapter. And I pretty much left all these other things standard, like the port number is standard at 502. And then once you have uh, that communication uh, pathway kind of described for Modbus Ethernet, you can go ahead and go new device. And so I've done that here and I created a new device. I just called it a well producer here. And let's kind of take a look at the settings for it. So in this case, I made the IP address the same as my stardom unit, 192.168.15. And then because it uses a Modbus Ethernet with kind of the RTU extension, I put one for the unit number. So that's kind of a whatever IP address and then a one for the unit number is what you'd like to add in there. And then uh, the other things that might be of interest to you is under the settings tab here, and these are kind of the uh, settings I used for communicating with it via Modbus. So I think it's pretty much all the default settings that they give, but you can kind of compare this to your Kepware server to see if they're any different. And then once you have that, you can go ahead and do kind of a right click over here and go new tag. I've already created a couple here. Uh, essentially give it any name you want. Uh, the address in this case that I'm looking for was of uh, 400,001 and then I did another one for 400,003 so here's kind of the first variable that I'm reading and then this is the one I want to be able to write to. So in this case uh, the data type is float. You can leave it as read write although in this case it's really only going to work good for a read. And then same for this guy whatever name you want. Uh, in this case uh, the address is 40,003 and you need to do this because it takes two words to do a uh, actual floating point variable. So 400,001, 400,002, those are used for the read variable. 400,003, 400,004, those are used for my uh, write variable. So once I have those set up, I can go ahead and uh, go tools, go ahead and launch the OPC quick client, which I've already done. And you can kind of see if I just kind of go down here to my actual RTU well producer, here's my two tags. And you can see here's the variable I'm reading in. So let's uh, just kind of shrink this so you can see both at the same time. And I've got my stardom unit in debug mode here. So here's my read variable. I'm just gonna double click on that and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a new var variable value. 
overwrite. And you can see up here, it's coming into the Kepler OPC server. So we know at this point, I can go ahead and read a value from the uh, stardom RTU into Kepler. Now for this guy, here's the write variable. I can go into Kepler. So imagine uh, this, if I uh, right click on it and I do something like a synchronous write, I can go uh, four, five, six, uh, six, seven, eight, hit apply. You can see it wrote it in here. And you can see down here in Logic Designer, the variable I'm watching, it went ahead and uh, did that. So essentially when it did a write, it went ahead and it wrote into these two holding registers here. And then it went through this function block and converted it to a real value. And then this real value is now available for whatever program uh, action I want to take within the startup unit. So that's getting my Kepler up and running. Let's take a look at the YView side of the house to see what we need to get YView up and running. So uh, I've gone ahead and opened up a little YView project here. First thing you're going to want to do is go under configuration, go to device connection. You're going to want to make sure you've got a PLC uh, one or at least one of your PLCs set up here for that. And then you're going to go under uh, your device connections, you're going to pick PLC and then for the protocol you're going to go down to other and you're going to get Modbus and then you're going to want to pick Modbus TCP IP uh, Ethernet substation and make sure that that's the actual protocol you're communicating under. And then uh, connection mode you can call it a uh, one to end that's fine. Everything else can be set up like what you're seeing here. Detail, you're just going to leave kind of standard. Target setting, you can give your port a name, although the really thing that matters here is your port number, which is zero. So I just called it well producer. You want to put in your IP address, and then you want to put in the port that you're communicating Modbus Ethernet over. All right. And then the next is you're going to go over to format setting, and you can go ahead and stick with the Modbus free, but you're going to want to kind of scroll over a little bit. And for your read holding registers and your write holding registers, you're going to want to make sure that those are two words because it takes two words to make a floating point. So that sets up your basic communications. Let's take a look at what you need to do on the display side. So under uh, screens here, I've gone ahead and done one screen. And uh, here's a basic screen. So I've gone ahead and I've uh, thrown a few graphics on the screen. Yokogawa, a well producer logo. Then the next thing I went and did is I went over here to data display and I went and dropped a couple of these numerical displays on the screen. And then the last thing I did is I went over here and I dropped an entry display on the screen. So this entry is going to allow me to go ahead and put in a set point. So let's take a look at the first one. So this is going to be displaying my read variable. Let's take a look how it's set up. So when I set up my communications, it was PLC1. So I picked that for PLC1. In terms of the port, it was using port 0. In terms of the unit ID, this is the Modbus RTU unit ID, which in this case for stardom is set to 1. So by default over Ethernet, it's going to be 1. And then I'm picking a 4 because I want to read holding registers and uh, you know 400,001. So that's going to be the first one. And the other thing I want to make sure I have here is two word because it takes two words to make a floating point. And then eight digits three decimal points, so it's eight total digits, three decimal points, and then I want to put down here for my input type, actual number. So uh, that's important because that's going to put a little F in front of there, which means float. Otherwise, your numbers aren't going to really make sense. So that's basically how you set up a display. As far as function goes down here, you can just go no function, since all I'm trying to do is display kind of a process variable number. This is just kind of like a read-in variable. Let's take a look at what I need to do to do a write variable. So once again, it's PLC1, port 0, the unit ID, which is 1, and then it's going to be 400,003. So in this case, these are the uh, holding registers that I'm going to go ahead and write to. So once again, two words, actual number, 83 down here. These, these can change based on how big of numbers you're dealing with. but in terms of this being a set point that I want to write to, I went ahead and picked this, entry target. 
So this essentially means that uh, as far as this keypad goes, this is one of the things that I can go ahead and enter. So if I hit up and down and I had multiple entry targets on the screen, I could essentially flip between those displays that are showing different entry targets. So, so we've shown you how to do a read variable, we've shown you how to do a write variable. Once you have all this, and this guy right here, it can just be set with its default settings. You could go ahead and do a file transfer and push that down to your YView uh, HMI display unit. Um, just make sure when you're kind of doing your transfer that you've also kind of taken the time to put in your IP address for the YView already. And then uh, once you have that, you can just go pick this and this is going to push it down to the unit. And you'll just see it going ahead and getting pushed down to the unit. And you might hear your YView unit beep a little bit and then it's going to kind of go through a loading process. And then once you have that, you're going to see this on the your uh, YView screen. All right, so uh, I'm going to go over to my YView unit and I'll have a kind of a video that I'm going to take specifically of the YView unit kind of showing how some of this is done from the uh, HMI's uh, touchscreen perspective. But let me just kind of show you that I'm actually writing from the YView HMI. So on my logic designer screen here, I'm watching this write variable. I'm going to go ahead and uh, punch in a number on the YView. So I'm going ahead and uh, typing in 111 uh, period 2, 2, 111, 2, 2, 2. And then I'm going to hit the CR button, carriage return. And that should go ahead and write it into the unit. And you can see there that the demo write variable has gone ahead and updated. And I'll show you just uh, a, a quick little... Uh, insert video at the end of this, what it looked from the HMI perspective. So there you have the basics in terms of uh, what it takes to set up Modbus uh, server communications from stardom off to an HMI panel or an OPC server. Uh, we also, of course, have uh, Modbus client capabilities, but that'll be uh, covered in a different video. And we also have uh, Modbus master and slave for serial communication capabilities. And we'll show that in a different video when we go ahead and communicate with a uh, Yokogawa EJX uh, 910 uh, differential pressure or uh, multivariable transmitter. So this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa. Hope you're having a great day and uh, take care. So we, here we have the actual Y view panel. We can see uh, on the bottom left, the 55.123, that's the number we're reading in from the stardom unit. And then we can see right below it the 899.589. That's the value we're going to write in. So if we want to write in a new value from the HMI panel, we can go to the touchpad here and put in a new number. So let me go ahead and type in 566. And then uh, 1, 2, Three, do a carriage return, and then that'll go ahead and write it into the actual stardom unit. And then let's take a look at our computer here, and we can see in Logic Designer there it is five six six one two three.